Arrow Pose has a lot of variations, so we'll take a look at this one at a time and learn how to set up each one. Let's start with the most basic form of arrow. Grab your belt and your blanket, extend one leg long, and fold the other leg so the foot comes into the hips. Now to elevate the hips, we'll make this pose a little bit more accessible if your hamstrings are shorter. We'll make sure that the fold of that blanket is the soft fold facing you. And then we'll wrap the rib cage to face the extended leg. Arms come up and forward to grab the foot on either side. If the hamstrings are tight, don't grab the foot just with one hand because it takes the twist out of the torso. So we want to wrap the rib cage towards that leg and use a belt instead. Place the belt around the top part of the foot and grab evenly with both arms extended. Now watch here that the foot does not begin to sickle. That's not a stable position for the knee. So we want to watch to see that the pinky edge is pulling back, not wrapping around, but pulling back. Sometimes we're tempted to do that because we're more flexible on the inner hamstrings than the outer hamstrings. And rolling up out of it. Now let's go ahead and see a variation of this pose, finding a twist in the arrow. So we call this twisted arrow. We'll start here by squaring the torso towards that leg and then reaching the opposite arm to grab the outside or the pinky edge of that extended leg's foot. The ear drops towards the knee to continue the twist in the cervical spine and the opposite shoulder internally rotates so the palm faces up behind you. If it's not accessible to grab that foot, again, we'll use the belt. Seeing me wrap it around the top part of the foot, we'll cross the arm around and wrap the fingertips around the belt so that we can keep an extended arm. We don't want a bent arm here struggling to keep that belt in place. And coming back around to release it. Now we'll see the fully restorative version called sleeping arrow. We need a big bolster, a belt, two blocks, and a blanket that we're sitting on. Setting the hips up on the blanket and extending that leg, folding the other leg in, pull the flesh of the buttocks straight back, and then we'll place that big rectangular bolster on top of the leg. Next, we'll take the belt in a large loop, so an eight foot strap is ideal for this one, and we'll take the belt around the back, underneath of the arm, so that we are in position with the belt to pull towards the foot. We'll thread the other end of the loop around the foot, top of the foot again, your flexibility will determine how far up the back or down the back that belt will go and how much you can tighten the strap. We do not want the foot to sickle, so watch that that pinky edge side of the belt is pulling back strongly to ensure a nice flexed foot. And then we stack the blocks however high we need to for our forehead to come down and rest easily. As the pose evolves, you might lower the blocks so that the forehead can come down even lower and tighten that strap by pulling back towards you to stay more in place. If you are more flexible, you might not even need a block underneath of your forehead, so you can just remove it and let the forehead rest on the bolster. Having the forehead or the frontal lobe of the brain resting comfortably on a support allows the mind to calm down and the nervous system to relax. This next variation of arrow pose is done at the wall and helps that extended leg's foot stay nice and flexed so there's absolutely no sickling. We'll place one block right next to the wall in the tallest height and have our bolster and block nearby. Then taking the strap, opening it up so we have that wide loop again, setting up with one leg on the wall and see how that foot goes right up to the block and we take the strap around the block, not the foot folding that other leg in. From this angle, you can see how to adjust the belt up or down the back, depending on your flexibility. Slide the bolster underneath of the belt onto that leg. And here we're in that same position, but the block at the wall is preventing us from sickling that foot. Tightening up the belt and then adjusting either down or up the back through trial and error, find the perfect position for your body. And as you stay here, allow the pose to evolve as your body opens. Now to access a different variation, we'll try folded arrow. Two blocks here, we're sitting up on that blanket already. We'll position the blocks horizontally, vertically, or potentially on different heights depending on our flexibility level. And then we'll take the big rectangular bolster into the hips, and then placing that bolster on top of the blocks, sliding it into your belly. 
Lengthen the spine and fold forward, forehead resting on the bolster, arms on either side, and the palms facing upwards. Now we'll add the quadriceps stretch to arrow pose. We'll come off of whatever we're sitting on first so that the hips are even on the ground. Then we'll fold one leg in and extend the other leg out in a hurdler stretch. And then once you're in this pose, we want to even out the hips with a blanket underneath both so the hips are dropping down evenly. Blocks come in front once again, and then the bolster is laid on top of the blocks. Pull it into the belly and then folding over, resting the forehead on the bolster. Now to fall an arrow. So we're already in the position. We're going to take a small skinny bolster and a block and we're already sitting up on our blanket. The small skinny bolster goes right along the length of that leg and then we'll turn the palm facing upwards and then the block will position with the opposite arm underneath of the head. The other arm can just rest with the palm on the floor or it can wrap around the back. And to come out of this pose, steady the block first with the hand before lifting the head. Now if we're a little less flexible, we'll set up with a bolster first on top of the leg and then we'll build the pose from there. So we'll externally rotate the shoulder and lay the arm alongside the bolster. Position the block with the opposite hand so the head can comfortably rest and the hand can rest on the bolster or it can wrap around the back like before. To come out of the pose, bring the hand back around to steady the block so that the head can lift up and release the arm. For fallen arrow with bound arms, we'll take a looped belt above the elbows and widen the arm so it's a little wider than shoulder width. This way we can take the belt and place it behind the head. Then we'll reach down once we have it there, grab the block, place it on top of the thigh, and the head can rest on it. Placing the palms together, you'll feel here that this is a very active pose and you're getting a great shoulder opener. To come out, release the block first, then the belt. That's a tough one. Great work. Mm -hmm.